We know the Bank of England has now intervened yet again to stabilize the bond markets over there. We're seeing some of the effects play out right now. Do you believe as though this is an environment where we can see another, in Jamie Dimon's words, easy 20% drop from current levels? I, I do believe so. I mean, the, the average bear market from peak to trough going back many, many years is about 35%. That's the average. Obviously, some down more, some down less. That would take you at about 3,100 uh, on the S&P 500, which would be a little shy of uh, what Jamie had said. I mean, the, the issue with the market is, yes, on one hand, we have this monetary tightening uh, and, and, and the noose continues to, to, to close. But at the same time, we now have earnings risk. And we're going to see that, obviously, beginning in a couple of days uh, all throughout the next couple of months. And I think that is the next hurdle uh, that the markets need to clear. If that's the case, Peter, if I could just follow up really quickly. There are actions that, that government or, or large financial entities are taking. The Bank of England is, has now intervened again in the marketplace right now. It seems as though the governments can, or I shouldn't say the governments, central banks and governments can be stabilizing factors in this kind of environment. Is it really the inflationary environment right now, the threat of it, that's keeping them relatively on the sidelines, save the BOE? Well, you can argue that what the Bank of England is doing is very destabilizing. It's proving that they can't get out of the easing and the QE that they've gotten themselves into. I mean, just in the month that they were supposed to start selling gilt, they find themselves buying them. Just a few weeks before, or a couple days, I'm sorry, before the end of uh, the emergency bond buying program, they're back in. So th that, that's the problem. This is actually very destabilizing. The market's not able to find sort of its right level in its own price discovery. And I'm afraid that this is not just going to be a Bank of England thing, and this is going to potentially spread to other bond markets. Okay. If we take a look at Josh, Peter makes some interesting points here with regard to the, the bigger picture environment. We are entering earnings season, which puts a lot more of the focus not just on the big picture, but the company-specific picture as well. The expectations that you have, I, I, I mean, have the markets already, in essence, priced in a lot of the negativity that Peter is referring to right now? Yeah, it seems it. I mean, I, you know, getting back to the original question about how much farther do we have to go, I mean, I, you know, Peter pointed out earnings season, which is obviously coming up. And I would say we don't have a lot farther to go. I mean, I think it is all, you know, all about earnings. You know, I would point out, you know, right now, you know, and this is kind of lagging data, but we have an S&P that looks, you know, quite healthy. And, you know, at the end of 08, you know, net debt to EBITDA. So just kind of looking at the balance sheet and the operating cash flow capability of the S&P, it was at about three and a quarter. We're now less than a third of that. So, you know, the lower, the better on a measure like that. And so I would say that we're in good shape in terms of do we have farther to go? But certainly it's that E, the earnings that are, you know, top of mind. And, and it, you know, we're only as good as our, you know, as our denominator here. So uh, I don't know. I, I'm a little bit more sanguine on the market, but certainly, you know, the Bank of England putting Band-Aids on, you know, on problems, you know, open wounds is is concerning. Josh, you know? let's put let's put let, let's put a, a little bit of emphasis on the on the numerator to that denominator as well. The price, the stock market you referred to. Sure. This is a situation where much of the downside has been attributed to rising interest rates and compressing valuations. The price on the price to earnings ratio. If earnings are an issue, price right now is in question. Do you feel as though the multiple in the market right now? is adequate, how far could it go to the downside, given what your earnings outlook is in the coming weeks? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, certainly rates are the, the backdrop. So, you know, we're trading at a, just under 15 times forward earnings. So on the face of it, that seems quite compelling in a, in a world where the 10-year in the U.S. is about 3.8 or 3.9, depending on, on when you look. So I, I don't think, you know, it's impossible to see, a, you know, a, a 13 multiple or, or lower on the market. I just... I feel like we're getting to the point and the market wants it where, you know, bad news is good news. You know, the market is, you know, definitely sees, you know, the, the negative wealth effect and that comes from the market activity, the residential real estate market. And we see this slowdown coming. It's very clear. You know, the, the Fed has pulled a muscle and it, can, it insists on continuing the race and finishing. 
And I think that scares the market. So I think certainly there's some multiple compression to come, but you know, there's not going to be a warning when it when it bottoms. I think uh, I think we're we're pretty close to done here. If bad news is good news, Peter, good news certainly is bad news in that kind of environment. Right. We saw that play out on Friday with the jobs numbers and the unemployment figures that came out. If we look at the possibility of a recession that's coming up, Jamie Dimon is not the first to come out and say that there is the likelihood of something happening down the line. He's put a timeline on six to nine months. During Delivering Alpha, we heard some negative commentary from folks like Stanley Druckenmiller, who knows a thing or two about macro markets as well. If we're not in a recession right now, what does it end up looking like, Peter, by the time it's done? And is, is there a possibility that we can achieve this kind of unicorn of a soft landing in global economic turmoil? Well, when we eventually see Q3 GDP, I, I think if you combine it with the first quarter and the second quarter, I think at best you'll probably see uh, no growth. Uh, so while we maybe we can debate recession or not, to me it's at this point semantics because parts of the economy are in a recession. Housing's in a recession. Autos, because of the, uh, the rise in funding costs now combined with record high prices, is probably on the cusp of one. Uh, the lowering consumer is feeling their own recession. Europe is in a recession. China is sort of in its own recession, what that means for other economies in Asia. So focus on more of the trajectory of growth here rather than the definitional uh, situation of whether we're in a recession or not. And then, of course, we get into to what your point is, whether it's mild or not. I think we'll, we'll, it remains to be seen uh, how much further uh, interest rates rise and, and what that's going to mean. I'm more afraid of just a, a higher level of interest rate environment for a longer period of time, which means that even if the recession is mild, it may drag on longer than what people are used to. All right. Josh, we've got just about a minute or so left here. Uh, you're the stock picker. You know what to do in this kind of environment. So, so what exactly do you do? What's, your, what's the shopping list? Where are you putting money to work? Sure. Well, yeah, time like this, it, certainly we don't know the trajectory of anything that well. And so I think companies with some stability and, and strength of business models. So, you know, in our Hennessy Cornerstone Midcap 30 Fund, I would point out a couple names uh, with, you know, uh, rising earnings, compelling valuation, and some stock price momentum. Uh, clean harbors, you know, industrial waste management, environmental remediation, uh, you know, some strong free cash flow generation. I think a name like that, you know, I think we can sleep at night with a name like that. We don't have to worry about product cycles and, and you know, trends coming and going. And, and then also a name like uh, graphic packaging, uh, which provides, you know, packaging materials for beverage and consumer products companies. You know, think of like frozen foods. Uh, names like that, you know, in the case of graphic packaging, about 10 times free cash flow. Uh, there's certainly a cushion there on on valuation and, you know, nothing's baked into that number. That's kind of an off the run name that I think uh, does well during times like this.